Hello folks, how's everybody doing again? Uh, this is Dr. Harry Canales again, and uh, joining me here shortly will be uh, my favorite chiropractor, the best chiropractor in the city of Chicago, Dr. John Heyer. And what ultimately I wanted to uh, conclude with in this section was following what we talked about last time, because this is very, very important. The importance of taking something that we read in books and that people are pontificating on uh, saying that they can do this or they can do that and showing that this is in fact what we do when the rubber hits the road in the, in the, in the clinic daily when it comes to these cases. Again, we talked about the muscles being short here and the muscles having the opportunity to achieve what we call more of a genetic length. So the genetic length of the muscle is the point where we're not going to be stimulating all this extra activity and, and bells and whistles to the brain. And somebody might say, well, how do we know that the central nervous system is responding to these things that we're doing. And we do use a couple techniques. One of the techniques is the patient being out of pain. And they realize what's happening because they're gone from having to turn the lights off and not being able to function in daily life and not being able to go about their daily activities. Another way we're able to conclude what's happening is by what we call moir topography. Now moir topography has been used by a good friend and colleague of mine for the last 30 years, and the Japanese are currently using war topography much more so than we are in the United States. I currently am using war topography on a limited basis. Like I said, this was a technique that was passed along to me, and what we're using war topography for is to look at skin lines. What this is is an actual patient. This patient is myself. And you can see, as I'm standing behind this screen, called a moir, a moir screen, there's threads that line this screen, and when the, when the lights hit this screen, the lights will actually parallel all the lights, the, the threads will actually parallel all the light beams to hit at an exactly 90 degree angle against this, the human body. What I want everyone to pay close attention to is how this plumb line runs straight up and down, and when you look at my head position here, it's got a slight rotation. You can see there's a little distortion in these leaves, but more importantly, my head is turned to the left and, and rotated this way. The next thing that you might want to take notice of is how these leaves here are a little distorted and angle a little bit. What's the moral to the story? The moral to the story is that at a certain point in utero, meaning when we're in our mother's womb, in our mother's belly before we're born, that the embryo, the outer sheath of the embryo, will actually invaginate to form the spinal column and the brainstem. So what's happening is when we see changes on the posture and the moir, we're actually looking at changes that the central nervous system is perceiving. So this picture is followed by the next picture where I actually put my orthosis in my mouth. And I haven't moved here. Uh, there's somebody taking a picture of me at this point and I'm standing in the same position. I actually reached in my pocket and I put in my mouthpiece, an orthotic that you saw in the previous slides. And immediately upon doing so, you can see that the head position actually rotated. Now, I wasn't aware of this because I didn't realize what was happening until after I saw my photos. Other than my head position rotating, the next thing that actually happened was you can see these leaves actually starting to get more horizontal with a little bit less distortion. Now, this happened within two seconds of putting the orthosis in. So what is that telling us? Not only is it telling us that there's changes taking place in the central nervous system, but it's also telling us that what we put in somebody's mouth can actually have ramifications downline. And that's why it's important to check appliances that were orthotics and splints that we're putting in people's mouths. The same thing can happen if you put a lift in somebody's foot. So I know that these are very, very faint and maybe a little bit difficult to see, but this is the before and this is after within one second of putting in the moir. Little turn of the head over here becomes more aligned within seconds. And then you can see how the leaves become a little more horizontal here versus a little bit more angled here. What I'd like to do right now is take a moment and introduce my good friend, Dr. John Heyer, again, and let him conclude with uh, okay. some more information on uh, posture and the bite and how really it all fits together. Thanks, Doc, Dr. Heyer. Doc, that's more of you than I ever want to see again. <laughs> that is actually Dr. Harry, folks. Okay, so what have we talked about so far? TMD is temporal mandibular disorder. And that means people who have headaches, who have neck pain, who have jaw pain, teeth grinding, sleep apnea, maybe they snore, maybe they have numbness and tingling. 
those are the kind of symptoms and pain that's associated with TMD. We've also talked about that there are a lot and lot of people who suffer from this and might be getting inappropriate care and they really need to look at a dental chiropractic combination for the relief of their pain. We've also seen that the body works as a unit, a kinematic chain. Everything has to be lined up properly. When the spine's in line, everything feels fine from the hips all the way up to the head. When something's shifted and out of place, it can affect not only the body part itself, but everything else involved. And we've also seen how a simple dental appliance can make changes in posture as well as the tests that will help show that it's affecting the whole body. As a chiropractor, I'm more familiar with an x-ray like this. This is a picture of a back. This is the thoracic and the lumbar region. You don't have to be an engineer to know that ain't right. That should be nice and straight and it has a scoliotic curve. What a lot of people don't know is that there was actually a dentist who did a research project on scoliosis. He was working with a chiropractic college and all he did was change the bite and he was correcting scoliotic curves. Now unfortunately, and this is a sad representation of this chiropractic school, once the chiropractic school found out this dentist was correcting scoliosis, they shut his research project down. And I'm sorry, it's a, a, a bad spot on the profession, but that's how effective changing the bite can be to the spine and vice versa. So, we all know that's not right. We all know that's not right either. The building itself is straight, but the foundation is crooked. The Leaning Tower of Pisa. You have to ask yourself, does your body look like this? Or does your body look like this? Bad posture, good posture. Which one are you? Unfortunately, because this is a YouTube or an internet video, there's really not a whole lot of things that we can tell you to do for yourself at home. We'd love to. I wish there was some type of exercise or some type of therapy you could do for yourself. The problem is, is that physicians, if we give you advice and you do something silly and you hurt yourself or harm yourself, we might be held liable. So the best thing that we can do for you right now is to offer you a complimentary consultation, either at Dr. Harry Canellis' office or at my office. It won't take any more than 20, maybe 30 minutes to do an initial consultation to see if your problem is something that we can help you with by our program. And so what I'm going to encourage you to do is to call the phone number on the video page here and make an appointment and say, hey, I saw that video on YouTube or wherever, or your friend emailed it to you, what, however you found it's fine. But call the number on the video and make an appointment and we'd be more than happy to help you. Thanks.